I grew up catching crappie. In fact, up until a couple years ago, the only time I ever went fishing was to catch crappie. Now, personally, I think they are the best tasting freshwater fish out there, which is why I want to get out on the water as soon as I can and fill up the boat with a ton of crappie for a fish fry on one of these random nice March weekends here in Missouri. The problem is, though, that pre-spawn crappie are just hard to pattern. Um, in fact, they're probably the only things out there more random than Missouri weather. Uh, it was actually, it was in the 60s a couple weekends ago, and then like two days ago, we had a freaking blizzard. But anyway, um, <laughs> one day, you know, crappie will want minnows, and then they want jigs, and then, you know, they're in the deep water, then they're in shallow, and it, it can be annoying and frustrating and just turn you off to pre-spawn crappie fishing altogether. That would be a shame, though, because, you know, in the early spring, there aren't as many boats out there. Those annoying jet skis, you're, you're not fighting, you know, wakes of, of speed boats. And crappie's just delicious. So here are five tips to help you catch more crappie in the early spring pre-spawn period. And tip number one is to watch the weather. Now you're not looking for the best weather for you. The best pre-spawn crappie fishing typically happens ahead of a cold front after a few warm days. At this time, male crappie are fanning out in the shallows making nests, and the females are swimming around looking for food. So if you can pay attention to the weather, know what fronts are coming in, um, pay attention to the, what the weather was the few days before, you'll know exactly where to focus your efforts. And tip number two is to look for ledges. Now when I say ledges, I don't mean deep ledges with big drop-offs. I'm talking about shallow ditches or gullies um, near the bank or in coves. If you can find one of these areas next to some tree stumps or a brush pile even better. Now this is where a good fish finder with side scanning can really help you identify structure that you would never know was there unless you covered every square inch of that cove or ledge with your standard down imaging fish finder. Now the third tip kind of ties into the last one. You need to look for what's called superstructure. Now contrary to what it sounds like, superstructure is actually structure within larger structure. Think, uh, think main channel where it's typically a good place to find fish. However, crappie are going to group up in locations that have structure within that. Think of, you know, a rock pile, a brush pile, stumps, um, a sharp bend in the main channel or the intersection of another secondary channel. And if you find these places, do yourself a favor and mark it. Whether you've got a fish finder with GPS, whether you need to take a picture of the bank to, to know where to pull up, Anything you can do to remember that spot, because if you find fish at that one spot, you're going to be able to find them there year after year. And the fourth tip, if you're having trouble locating these places that are holding crappie, is to try trolling. Trolling, which is also known as spider rigging, is the shotgun approach to locating fish. What you have is several poles in rod holders with different types of baits on it. You know, you might have two with minnows and two with jigs, you know, two more with different color jigs, just, just a bunch of different things, um, all at different depths, you know, each one varying. And you just slowly work your way through, you know, main channel, a cove, or, or anywhere that typically holds fish um, until you find them. This allows you to quickly cover a lot of water and quickly figure out what it is that the fish are wanting that particular day. Now, you'll probably lose a lot of gear, not speaking from experience, of course, but it could mean the difference between catching a lot of crappie and going home scum. And the last tip is less of a tip and more of a reminder. Colder weather and colder water mean the crappie are going to behave less aggressively and the strikes will be very soft. You will rarely see those pole bending strikes that almost pulls the pole out of your hand during the pre-spawn. Um, you may get that every once in a while, but I highly doubt it. It's just the way cold weather, cold water, affects fish. Um, your bobber also won't, you know, just disappear like some great sea creature just came up and grabbed it. Um, more likely it would be, you know, your line goes slack or, you know, takes off in a, in a random direction. Um, or it may feel like, you know, when you're reeling in your lure, like you picked up a, a leaf or something. It just something doesn't feel right. If you, if you get that feeling, like, like it just doesn't feel normal, set the hook. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. I, I can't tell you how many times I've done that thinking and it's not going to be anything, and I caught a fish. So that was five pre-spawn crappie fishing tips to help you get out on the water and fill up your boat for an early fish fry. Now, if you've got any more pre-spawn crappie fishing tips, 
leave those down in the comments below. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and consider subscribing so you can stay informed.